it's Lily again. Welcome to Lily's Musings. This is my series of videos talking about the philosophy of music, of creation. This is my third episode, so you may notice that this is not the same backdrop as my usual headquarters, and that's because I'm traveling for the first time in like a year and a half, and it feels like a luxury, as it should, you know? It feels unusual, to say the least. I thought, you know, even though this is not like the best quality video. I'm in my hotel room. I thought I should still make a video and keep this going. One video per week to keep the conversation flowing about music and then like maybe more people will see these videos and then more questions will be asked which will lead to more videos and so on. So I had this, I just remembered some insight uh, that I got from reading, well I say reading but I really enjoy audiobooks because that allows me to go on a walk or run as I'm reading the book so I, I, I like that uh, that multitasking because there's just not enough hours in one day. This author who was suggested called James Clear talks about atomic habits. The reason why he calls them atomic habits is that they're small but like infinitely powerful. They, they end up uh, contributing to everything on a bigger scale, like atoms. He gave this example even of, um, you know, the, the metaphor, the analogy of like, you can really go off track over time just because you're repeating one seemingly small thing every day or, you know, several times a day. And it might not seem, it might seem like insignificant on the day to day, but then it's like, oh, how did I get there? Like so far off course, you know, one year later. And it's, and the culprit is that tiny little atomic habit. Obviously in the virtuous way, these small good habits that you can set for yourself are going to build you up over time. The reason he gives for us like not sticking to these is, is exactly that. It's that we don't see those results as fast as we would like because we're impatient. We're impatient creatures and we want those results. So how does this even relate to music? We can apply this to feeling like you're not creating anything, you're not creating enough, and then excuses come in like I don't have enough time and I don't have the resources, whether it's time, money, or the writer's block thing, you know, like I don't have any ideas. I just feel like inspiration is bleh. And so how do you take things into your own hands and decide that you're going to steer yourself into the right path, onto the right course? The first thing is to get your space super clear and super accessible. Say, for example, you're trying to learn how to use your groove box or your synth and it's placated against the wall in the back of the room like behind a table and it's not plugged in then just the effort that it's going to take you and the time it's going to take you to set it up is already setting you up for failure you're going to tell yourself immediately that i will use that time differently so that's the first thing is make things accessible and prioritize their spend a weekend reorganizing your entire apartment or that your entire studio to make things more ergonomic that's the word i was looking for ergonomic, okay? The second thing is that even if you don't feel that zest of like, I am ambitious today, like I want to get things done, just get that routine working, get that routine started. If you wake up in the morning and that's when you feel like the creative energy, you just sit down for five minutes. Just start with two minutes. Open up your session or, or you know, turn on your synth or, you know, pick up your guitar, whatever you're using for your for creating. Just don't put pressure on yourself, but show up. And like we say that showing up is already half of the job done in many cases so if you just sit down and you have made that point of showing up for yourself for two minutes and then you stop it's like it's okay I, I, I showed up and then maybe two minutes will become five minutes five minutes ten minutes it's just like a muscle that we're working on that we are building strength for so really for these first two points perseverance is key um, I'm actually making a track called perseverance sidetracking a little bit here but I really get inspired by conversations I have in my in my day-to-day -day. and it was no it was again an audiobook that was talking about like the difference between wanting and yearning and they're not the same the yearning is really what our soul wants that's what the book says and then I, I really got interested in pondering on that made a song like the yearning made a song you kind of get into that mindset of using the world around you as your source of inspiration the more time you spend in that mindset the more things will just flow out of you the more things will just spill out and the the third thing the last thing uh i don't remember the name i think it's called spoons or something 
that just like a battery, I'm not saying we're like a battery, but you know, we, we have, um, depending on our personalities and our lifestyle and, and everything, we have a finite amount of, of energy that we can devote every day to concentration, to, you know, creation, organization, different kinds of skills of the left and right hemisphere of the brain. So you need to figure out I still haven't really, I'm still kind of all over the place. I have a lot of to-do lists. I have like my calendar is packed with events, 10 a day, but I haven't found like that perfect routine yet. I think it's like a, a very complex science and we can spend decades refining it, like learning what times of the day, you know, you're going to be good at answering emails and writing and uh, doing this kind of task. When are the blocks of time going to be for you to create your music? I often make this mistake because I'm an email junkie, getting through all my mundane tasks powering through them being like yeah I'm like on fire today and my to-do list is getting knocked off I have kind of drained a big amount of my of my energy when I finally sit down for studio time it's like I don't have that that kick anymore I don't have that drive anymore it's really about finding and allocating yourself the right tasks for the right times of the day for the right mood there is a question of discipline because sometimes you won't feel like doing something you like I said earlier that's how you grow that muscle it's how you build that strength and that perseverance. The conclusion of this video is really as long as you're ready to experiment and enjoy the trial and error process and that you're going to fail and fail and fail and fail and that's how you're going to learn what works. Failure is just moving forward. That really helps me. Like I see the trial and error journey as a, a process of elimination and refining your lifestyle, refining uh, your musical process and seeing what is the best adapted to who I am. The most adapted tools for who I am and what I'm trying to create. That comes through trial and error baby so that's it for me tonight i wanted to keep this kind of short and sweet waking up at 4 30 tomorrow morning i am excited <laughs> so i guess we could call this video three useful tips for being more ergonomic three tips for creative ergonomics yeah why not i might change it later in the in the title and in the description but anyway you you will have seen my attempt Lots of love and feel free to always, of course, comment and suggest different topics. If you are if you want a little bit more precision, more detail, more, you know, more technical examples, I would, I'm free to do that. It's going to require more editing, but I am up for the challenge, so go ahead and challenge me and I'll see you soon. Bye.